Outside Verner Elementary School, this is on the city's northwest side. I grew up right in the city of Detroit, and this was my elementary school as a kid. I'm from a big family, if you know me. Many of my brothers and sisters went to DPS schools. I have nieces and nephews who attend DPS schools right this minute. I had a sister who taught in the DPS school district. So this story is really personal for me. But everyone, everyone takes ownership in this story. I mean, this is our city. These are our kids. And nothing that happens in the city of Detroit uh, won't go by without affecting really all of Southeast Michigan. So this crisis belongs to all of us and cannot continue. We've got to figure out a way to fix our schools, especially what's happening at an elementary and middle school like Spain uh, Elementary and Middle School. I was watching CNN before I came in to work today, and again, those deplorable conditions were in the national spotlight. 7 Action News reporter Kim Russell, she's been following the situation at Spain and many of our schools in the city of Detroit, and she has the results of a shocking inspection report that was released today. She joins us live right now, right outside Spain. Kim? Yes, Carolyn. Those teachers a couple weeks ago exposed these conditions to me and what we saw steam coming out of the asphalt in the parking lot of Spain Elementary School, plus coming out of the playground soil where children used to play. When I went in the school with the teacher's help, I could smell the mold. I knew it wasn't safe. Now, inspection reports are being released that confirm when the district told me point blank there is no mold in that building. It lied. I sat down with emergency manager Darnell early to talk to him about how this could happen. The city inspection report is damning and confirms everything we first reported on Action News. Remember that water damaged gym floor? The report says there's mold growing under the wood flooring and even worse, possible diffusion of mold spores throughout the building. There's evidence of vermin infestation, including fecal matter and animal carcasses in various rooms. There are also broken doors, water leaks, missing tiles, broken glass, more mold and mildew, and heat exhaust spewing onto the playground. It's a shocking report by any measure, except apparently to emergency manager Darnell Early. And people have known about the condition of Spain. In an interview last week, he said the district was handling it. We're being responsive when we have issues such as Spain. Uh, although it just came to light publicly, uh, this has been an issue that has been uh, addressed through a plan for a long time. And this didn't just happen overnight. Exactly. The district sealed off the gym after my report on the mold but did nothing about the leaking roof. It seems like by neglecting one issue, you get more issues and more <clears throat> issues. For example, you neglect the roof, and then you get the mold throughout the building. Well, let me just stop you right there. We're not neglecting anything. What we're doing is we're trying to spread the resources that we have to address everything. But don't you have to prioritize building safety? If there are any issues that have been brought to our attention that suggest that any of the students or any of the employees or any of the general public are uh, at, at jeopardy for being in unsafe conditions. We've addressed those. But that's not true. Teachers and the principal at Spain notified the district last year about mold and health concerns. They even filed complaints with the state. A lot of my staff members, they are sick because of it. And you've told them this? And we've told them that. The district told the state the same thing it told me when I did the story. There was no proof of mold. What it left out was that there was no proof because it didn't test for mold. Months ago, teachers filed complaints with the state, and the state notified the district saying it's unsafe, there's mold, we're having breathing problems, and it wasn't addressed. Well, to the extent that those notifications have gone forward, my information suggests that we've done what we can to be in compliance with those codes. When city inspectors investigated conditions in Spain Elementary Middle School the day after 7 Action News exposed conditions, the school was far from in compliance. You said you addressed these concerns to meet code, but my understanding is there were more than a dozen code violations found. Code violations are not new to the Detroit Public Schools. Teachers tell me they have been warned, do not let the media in the building again. I got to tell you, we are committed to exposing problems that are dangerous to kids. And I hope teachers trust me if they see problems that they want addressed that are being ignored. Now, this is not the only thing we talked to emergency manager Darnell Early about. We also reviewed numerous employee contracts for his top officials and the incomes, the benefits they're getting are shocking. When you look at the size of the district, it's got almost 46,000 students. It's right around 90th in the nation. But when you look at the pay of your administration and your top officials, they're some of the highest in the country. 
How do you justify that? Well, I haven't seen that, first of all. So, you know, if you say that, and I haven't seen your research, so I'm not trying to justify or not justify anything. And this is some of it. I can let you review it. Do the priorities need to be readjusted in the Detroit Public School District? We talked to the emergency manager about it. The full story tonight at 11.